What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Sunday Drive. For the second week in a row, we are discussing clutches. But this time, I want to discuss the driving dynamics of clutches. More specifically, lighter flywheels. Let you guys know my honest opinion about lighter flywheels on these cars and whether I think you should buy one or not. Let's get started. Right, before we get started, if you're new here, you should consider subscribing. We have a lot of fun with E36 BMWs and a lot of other cars here. If you missed our video last week where we talked about my previous clutch kit, the FX Stage 2 clutch kit that exploded, and I swear this is gonna be the last video for a long time. You guys see this photo, but like I just cannot stress that scared me a lot. It's telling me it's negative 35 out. That was the clutch disc that I just ran. I had it on there for about 25,000 miles. And that clutch kit had a 14 pound steel flywheel, which is 11 pounds lighter than the factory one. So it's considerably lighter. For reference, the UUC kit is about 12 or 13 pounds. FC Piero is like a Fidenza kit that's 13 pounds and JB Racing's are 10. So it's considerably lighter than stock, and I wanted to take this opportunity today to kind of talk about it. I've now driven this Vallejo kit for about 915 miles, and we'll talk about the Vallejo kit at the end of this video. So I have a good frame of reference, fresh in my mind of, okay, how did the FX kit just drove, comparing it to now a stock, stock in air quotes, clutch setup. We'll start with some pros of the lighter flywheel, and then we'll talk about some cons things that I didn't like as much about the lighter flywheel experience. Starting off on the pros is the biggest reason why you would do one, is that the motor was so much more free revy. It made downshifts very easy and very fun. You hardly had to blip the throttle at all to get it to kind of come up. It was just you tap it, or tack it shoot straight up exactly where you'd want it to be for any downshift. Pair that with the, the weight of the Kevlar clutch, which is not really pertinent to the flywheel, but pairing that with the, the stiffer clutch pedal, it felt very sporty. It was a cool experience. Kind of going along with that would be how easy it was for the car to change speed. There's two edges to this sword, so we'll talk about the negative of it later. The positive was that I didn't ever have to give this car as much throttle input to do anything, uh, which is actually really nice in daily driving, which is not something that usually you would say about a lot of these performance mods. What I noticed a lot in daily driving was that I didn't have to really, I, I could keep the car in a much higher gear and I didn't have to give it as much throttle input to get anywhere. I'm gonna use, say 30 miles an hour, going up a slight hill. You're in fourth gear, kind of riding at like, you know, whatever it is, just over 1500 RPM. With the lighter flywheel, it was really easy for me to just kind of like ride the throttle a little bit and the engine would kind of just like, you know, troll along up the hill. Now that I'm back in the stock setup, if I'm in that same situation, I have to downshift. I have to go from four to three. So I could hold gears a lot longer with the lighter flywheel and the engine gets hit at a much lower RPM. That isn't really a thing for most people. I'm just a crazy short shifter and I'm kind of lazy when it comes to the driving manual, so I'll kind of just like pick a gear and stay in it. I know that that's a habitual thing, but it was something nice in daily driving, especially too on the highway. Like if I was going up a hill, my MPG needle on the highway almost never touched below the 25 mark. It always stayed kind of, sometimes it, I'd get it like right to the 25 mark, but it would always kind of stay there or above, even on uphills when I had to give it a little more throttle input to kind of get up the hill. Now, on uh, some of the same hills and inclines, I, the needle kind of goes down to like the 20 mark. And I find a lot too in like normal traffic, when I'm accelerating, the needle's kind of hanging out more in the 15 to 20 range, sometimes even the 10 to, 10 to 15 range. Not really the hugest deal in the world. And I'll explain the physics behind this a little bit for those who don't know. The reason that is the case is when you have a lighter flywheel, you're taking resistance off the motor. Your flywheel's spinning on the engine and thus causing resistance. You take weight off of that, you're taking weight off the engine, less rotational mass, less inertia, and the engine is gonna be able to rev easier. So that's why when you're in traffic, it doesn't take as much throttle input. I don't actually know what effect this has on gas mileage. Technically, a heavier flywheel would give you worse gas mileage, but I've actually found when cruising with this Vallejo kit, 
it's still pretty similar to how it was with the lighter flywheel. I didn't really see any performance benefit per se with the flywheel. Some people say that their car felt quicker after they put it on. I didn't, honestly. There, there's a math equation for it. It's like a, a percentage difference. I would describe it as reducing drivetrain loss, but I don't know if that's actually correct or not. That would be essentially the effect. There's less drivetrain loss, so more of the power is getting to the wheels. So I didn't really notice any of that difference in actual driving, more or less just the free reviness and downshifting and less throttle input required to kind of go up a hill. Something else that I did also kind of like was it was really easy to engine brake with the lighter flywheel because there's less inertia, less rotational mass. The car would slow down pretty quickly after you let your foot off the gas. So I'd come off a highway going 70 miles an hour and just let off and the car would start to slow down. I could throw in the four and the three and I could shed most of my speed without ever having to touch the brakes. Now that I have the stock clutch back on, that's not really the case anymore. I was kind of surprised actually when going to this Vallejo kit at how easy it was for the car to just kind of cruise. Like if I let off in fifth gear, especially if I'm going fast, the car just kind of keeps going. It really takes a while for it to slow down. Now, I wanna talk about some cons to the lighter flywheel, some things I didn't really like as much. Firstly, I'm gonna get the obvious one out of the way, the noise. There was a lot of noises created by the flywheel. The gearbox chatter is the main one, although I actually didn't mind the gearbox chatter. For those of you who don't know what gearbox chatter is, I will link a video in the description and you can go look at what that looks like. But basically, because there's less deadening in the engine transmission assembly, a lot more of those vibrations from inside the transmission are being emitted, transferred to you, you're hearing the noise, you're feeling it, I, not really feeling it, but the only way I'd really notice it was if it was like 90 degrees outside with the AC on, and then I would, I would hear it outside the car. If you were standing next to the car, or if you had like a barrier or something next to you in traffic or cars, like then you could hear it, but honestly, it kind of just blended in with the idle of the car and all the other noises that it kind of makes. So it never really bothered me all that much. But I think more so than the gearbox chatter and what actually bothered me was just the general noise while the car was moving. There was a lot of gear lash and just like gearbox noise from the first, I, well, I, all the years really. One of the notable ones was like second, third, and fourth. Accelerating from like 2000 to 3500 in that range, you kind of hear like a sounded like gearbox noise. This Vallejo kit actually has a little bit of that too, but it's a lot less so than the FX kit did with the lighter flywheel. That was kind of annoying. And then also when you were like wide open throttle shifting, say two to three or three to four, you'd kind of hear it almost, it sounded like a grinding sound, but it's not like, not like gear grind. Like it didn't sound violent, more just like, you just kind of hear the synchros lining up. You just hear the gears moving, like the, the transmission functioning. Now, some of you out there might actually like that. Um, honestly, it kind of just blended in the background for me. I just kind of forgot it was there, but I could see how that could be annoying. And I mean, I wasn't too particular about the sound. It was just kind of like, it is what it is sort of deal. So I put up with it. But I think the actual biggest flaw of the lighter flywheel and a streetcar, in my opinion, was kind of how easy it is for the engine to change speed. So that's a good thing, depending on the setting. If you were downshifting, you're at high RPM conditions, you're on the track, form driving, you wanna get that crisp downshift, it's really nice for that. However, when you are just going around town, trolling through the gears, trying to get a smooth shift up or down with the lighter flywheel is a lot more of a task. I'm running factory motor mounts, and on the factory motor mounts, they are rubber, the rubber deflects right? This is by intention. On a stock weight flywheel, like the one I have in here now, if I'm in, say, second gear, and I just go from no throttle input to flat footing it, it'll hiccup a little bit because the mounts are deflecting a tiny bit, and then it'll kind of, you know, catch up with itself, and it'll go. The lighter flywheel, if you do the same thing, it is going to be a lot more violent. Now, you could just say, hey, Sonny, 
why, why would you go from zero throttle input to full? You wouldn't, but that happens all the time in traffic. You had to get your clutch work perfectly or else it was just gonna create a jerky shift. And what also wasn't nice about it is because the clutch was also heavier, the Kevlar disc and the FX kit, the bike point was a little smaller and the clutch was a lot more grabby. So I kind of found I was, sometimes by the end of my drives, my like foot wrist would be sore just from the amount of like feathering, just get the perfect amount of throttle in so that the shift would be smooth. Because the engine is able to change speed much, much quicker. So I have to be more careful with the throttle. Now, a lot of these complaints are not really deal breakers for the lighter flywheel, in my opinion. I think if you have a weekend toy and you really want that next level of performance, track car, weekend toy, this car doesn't really, this car doesn't get 10,000 miles a year. I think the lighter flywheel is a great mod. Um, it was a lot of fun and it created a really sporty experience. But on a car that gets driven a lot, or if you're kind of, I don't want to say particular, but like when you're just kind of driving, like you don't want to think about it, having a stock clutch is really nice. The flywheel was just a little more difficult enough for me to have to think about it while I'm driving. Whereas now I can just kind of like throw it in a gear. I, I know how to downshift it, everything. Like I, I don't really have to think about it. It just happens, right? And that's what the flywheel lost me. On back roads, it was great. Right? I want to think about driving the car. I want to have that next level of feedback. I want it, the car to be more connected to me. When I'm taking it around town, I don't really want that. So it kind of sucks. And something that I didn't really think I was going to like, or not like, notice, or that I wasn't really considering before I put the heavier flywheel on, was induction noise. When I downshift now, I get a really nice like whoosh from the intake as it's sucking in air because I have to give it more throttle input. Like it makes sense. But I wasn't really thinking about that. And it's just like kind of a funny thing. <laughs> Love that noise. Yeah. Gotta do it, man. You got the open roads. One, two, three, that's what these cars are like. But the induction noise got a little bit better actually with the heavier flywheel, which is, I am all for it. I am induction noise all the way. I mean, exhaust is nice too, but like nothing beats a good induction sound, especially on these BMWs in my opinion. But take care everybody, and I will see you in the next one.